Welcome to another video guys. So in today's video, I want to do a full top down analysis. So what I mean is that we'll start from the fundamentals, go to the technicals, go through everything that we've studied so far. So we can gather all the information and we're going to put it to use, right? To, so, so you can be able to identify the direction without even actually looking at a chart uh, and then understanding that we're only using technical analysis as a filter once we've understood our direction once we've derived our direction from the uh, fundamental analysis right so we're going to start with the fundamental analysis aspect of things so we're going to jump straight into the spreadsheet right so that we can crunch the numbers so what the, the actual currencies that we'll be looking at is australia as well as new zealand right so it's going to be australia as well as new zealand so if we're looking firstly on the non-commercials by non-commercials this is the commitment of traders report so this gives us an indication of the of the large institutions uh hedge funds uh banks in terms of their positioning right in terms of their open interest are they are they buying or are they selling uh that specific economy or that specific currency so as you can see for australia they are currently 72 percent short so they are selling the australian dollar in the New Zealand dollar, they are 60% long, so they are buying the New Zealand dollar. So that's a positive for New Zealand dollar and a negative for Australian dollar. When it comes to interest rates, you can see that interest rates are higher in the New Zealand economy at 5.5 and at 4.35 for the Australian economy, right? So that means that it benefits more or it makes more sense to buy the New Zealand dollar against the Australian dollar, right? And then when it comes to uh, GDP, we can see that it moved from 0 0.4 to 0 0.2 when it comes to the Australian dollar as well as for New Zealand it moves from 0 0.4 to 0 0.2 so that that it, that more more or less looks the same right and then if you go into PMIs we can see that when it comes to the services Australia does not have the services recorded here but when it comes to the manufacturing we can see that for New Zealand it, it's actually increasing it moved from 43.38 to 47.25 for Australia, it dropped from 50.1 to 47.7. The most important thing to remember with PMIs is that they are a leading indicator when it comes to the business side of things or the business health of an economy. And a reading of 50 and above means that economy is expanding or business is, is doing well and there's expansion. If it's 49 and below, that means that economy is what? Is in a contraction or a slowdown, right? So as you can see, for Australia, they, they've just dipped into a slowdown. For New Zealand, they're also in a slowdown or contractionary phase because they're below 50 or 49, but they are slightly pushing higher, right? So there as well, they none, none is better than the other day. When it comes to composites, we can see that they actually increased from 49 to 51, for 51.8 for Australia, and for New Zealand, it increased to 50. So they're both in a good position. Australia obviously having a higher compared to the new zealand so that's a benefit for australia there if we come on to inflation we can see that it, inflation sits at 4.1 for australia for new zealand it sits at 4.7 right so what is the understanding here the target for new for new zealand is two percent the target for australia is two to three percent so that means that who is the closest to their target right now it is australia sitting at 4.1 percent so since they are sitting at 4.1 percent that means that they now getting closer to their target and that means that at some point the closer they get the more likely it is for them to cut interest rates and we understand that when, it, when an economy cuts interest rates investors tend to move their capital from that specific economy why because they want to get a return so they're going to shift their capital into an asset that is going to give them a higher return right so that is what we have there so we can see that australia is closer even though they both way above their targets but australia is closer but new zealand is still at 4.7 and they're not yet closer to their two percent target so new zealand has more more room to go compared to australia so that means that new zealand is or between the two the one who is most likely to cut interest rates interest rates first would be australia compared to new zealand because australia is closer to their target in comparison to new zealand right so that is how we're looking at it and then if we look at core inflation as we can see as well 4.2 percent for australia 4.4 for for new zealand so for new zealand is also higher in terms of core inflation so it gives us the same story as we saw with headline inflation there right and then 
if we look at uh, inflation on a, inflation on a monthly basis uh, let me just scroll a bit if we look at inflation on a monthly basis we can see that for australia it is currently sitting at 0 0.6 for new zealand it is currently sitting at 0 0.5 as you can see here right so but that's a monthly change so that's a change month per month right then as you can see if we also look at uh, unemployment for australia it jumped up from 3.9 to 4.1 for new zealand it moved from 3.9 to 4 percent so unemployment is both going higher but it is higher in, in the australian economy and that means that it supports what we said with inflation because it means that if the economy if unemployment is ticking higher it means that the, int the higher interest rates are working and eventually that economy the central bank will have to do what will have to start cutting interest rates once inflation starts falling and unemployment starts picking higher right so that is a that that points in the good direction or it also we or confirms what we said when it comes to the australian dollar and then in the new zealand dollar it's also giving us the same sense but also a key thing to remember is the fact that the new zealand dollar or the, or the reserve bank of new zealand actually started hiking interest rates first it was in i think november if i'm not mistaken 2021 whereas australia started hiking in 2022 so for them to still have a higher inflation rate compared to australia even though they started hiking first that means that their inflation is more persistent which means that they are likely to do what to keep their interest rates higher or maybe potentially even hike interest rates for the new zealand right that would obviously boost the new zealand dollar against the australian dollar right and then if we look at unemployment like i said it's lower in the in, in the new zealand new zealand economy which is a positive for new zealand there and then if we come on to consumer confidence we can see that for new zealand it moved from 80 to 88.9 for australia it moved from 81 to 86 right so a rate of change of 8.7 a rate of change of five so that that means that the, the new zealand dollar is also in a better position so just looking at the numbers there we can see that there is a divergence but there isn't that much of a greater divergence in terms of one is extremely weak and one is extremely strong but new zealand has more positives than negatives than that compared to the australian dollar and especially looking at the institutional or the smart money positioning in the fact that they are 72 percent short on australia and 60 percent long on new zealand so that was the first part just by looking at the numbers here we can see that if we were to trade these currencies we would look to sell australia and buy new zealand because we'd also get a positive interest payment because of 5.5 percent on the new zealand dollar that we'll be buying and 4.35 percent on the australian dollar that we'll be selling which means that we'll be getting a positive interest rate payment right so that's the first part and then the second part is actually going so let us go on to our trading view app here because i want us to see to look at something else that most traders also do not pay much attention to right what we're gonna look at right now it is called yields and one thing you need to understand is that there are bonds and then there are bond yields and the currency generally it follows the what it follows the bond yield so it does not follow the bond it follows the yield so if the price of the bond actually goes higher the yield goes lower and if the yield goes higher the bond goes lower but what i need you to focus on here specifically with regards to 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 what i'm doing right now is the fact that uh we are going to focus on the yield of the economy right so we are going to focus on what on what on the yield of the economy so just wait for this page to actually respond i'm not sure why it's slow um so that we can have an idea of what we are, of what we are looking at so first thing first thing to explain is that as you can see we have australia new zealand australia is the base currency new zealand is the code currency so whenever you have two currencies like this if the chart is going down it means that the base currency is weakening if the chart is going up it means that the base currency is strengthening and the code currency is weakening i need you to grasp that concept right because now what we're gonna look at is the fact that we're gonna look at the australia against the new zealand yield in this case we we'll look at the australia two-year yield versus the new zealand versus the new zealand two-year yield right so just like how we we, we we pairing australia against new zealand we're also gonna pair 
Australia yield or bond yield against the New Zealand bond yield, right? So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna have to see the direction. So if it's going down, it will mean that Australia, AUD, NZD should also be going down, right? So as you can see, the trend is obviously to the downside. If you're looking from, from left to right. So that is also confirming what we got from the numbers from the actual spreadsheet, right? We haven't we not we haven't gone into the actual chart yet. We're just looking at the fundamental aspects of things. Then, if you go into the actual um, interest rate decision meetings for the for the two central banks, we had uh, Australia. We also had New Zealand, right? So we're gonna just have a look at what they are saying. Remember what I said when it comes to inflation that New Zealand inflation is still higher, even though they are also they are sitting at four point seven percent, but it's higher then what then the then inflation in the australian economy so that means that they have a higher likelihood of keeping interest rates higher or even potentially hiking right so this was from their meeting on the 29th of november 2023 they are going to have their next meeting this week uh their last meeting was in november last year but essentially the key thing to take away here is that they kept interest rates unchanged at 5.5 percent but the most important thing is that they saw or they re re how can i how can I uh they yeah they saw their official cash rate at 5.63 percent in March 2024 right so what does that mean currently it's sitting at 5.5 percent so that means that they do see that there is a potential of them hiking further right they they're not saying they will hike but they saw that there is potential of them what hiking further this was back in november right so that window is still open especially like i said because we're seeing inflation is still what is still higher that is what we have there right so it gives them that more of a hawkish or bullish bias just just because of that of the fact that they've they've um they've actually revised their 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 projections higher right for the for the for the official cash rate in march 2024 so as I was saying for for Australia, as you can see in their latest meeting that they had, they actually kept their rates unchanged at 4.35%. And they did say that while, while recent data indicated that inflation is easing, it still remains high. And like I, like I explained, it's still at 4.1%, which is almost double their 2% target, right? So that is also not good, but they are closer to their target compared to New Zealand, who is still at 4.7%, right? So that is where we seeing that slight divergence it's not a big divergence but there is room for who for new zealand to hold interest rates higher for longer or even potentially high interest rates compared to the australian dollar especially since we're seeing that in the australian dollar unemployment is also ticking up or increasing right so that is how we look at the fundamental space to get an idea of what is really happening and then like i said we also looked at the bond yields right so as you can see this is the chart and then like i said we want to earn a what we want to earn a positive interest because remember all that we've been doing right now we've been following the sequence that we have right here which is our top-down analysis sequence in terms of the fact that we're starting with fundamentals then we're moving from fundamentals and then we start doing our technicals and obviously at the end we want to achieve that forex carry trade where we're getting a positive interest payment and then we're gonna use our forex sentiment tool to manage our trade so we now have the direction right we know which direction we want to take based on fundamentals and then of course we now look at the actual pay are we gonna get a positive interest if we're looking to sell australia against the new zealand dollar so as you can see here on the swap we can see on the swap short you're getting 0 0.116 pips on the long side you're getting negative 0 0.633 pips right so that means that if you're selling you are gonna get paid a positive interest but if you're buying you're gonna get you're gonna get charged a negative interest so that goes with the direction that we're looking to take which is to sell right so in this case that is why I've been going short Australia against the New Zealand dollar since last year and all we are doing at this point it's just waiting for pullbacks so we're waiting for retracements higher on the weekly time frame or retracements higher on the daily time frame and then we look for opportunities to buy in and to scale in our positions as you can see these positions combined are close to 900 pips now all these positions combined and 
we are approaching our first target at 1.0556 that is my first target and then my second target will be at 1.05212 right so that is how i've been that, that is how i've managed to hold this trade com com comfortably uh being patient and allowing the market to do what it does right uh, like you can see guys i only executed these trades three times i did not have to be in front of my screen the whole time but what gave me the confidence to actually execute what gave me the confidence to actually hold it's everything that i've done and showed you guys yes data has changed from last year but it it, it has progressed in a similar way nothing much has changed in terms of now of, but by that i mean that maybe it, we were bullish australia against new zealand last year no it was the same yes it has developed but it it's the same it, it gave the same outcome from last year as it, as, it, as it is still giving the same outcome today right which is why i've been holding comfortably even though it took some time to get to my direction but at the same time i was not rushing my trade why because i'm getting paid a positive swap for holding these these positions so i'm getting paid twice i'm earning an interest and i'm also getting paid in pips because the trade is moving in my direction and as, as you can see all these positions are risk-free and the confidence that i'm getting to hold it's not me guessing the direction because i started on the daily time frame and i'm seeing that the daily time frame is going down and now it's going up and no i'm sticking to the facts i showed you guys facts numbers and remember numbers don't get happy angry or sad trust the numbers stick to the numbers right remember analysis is not storytelling focus on the numbers the numbers will tell you the actual direction that an economy or currency pay is going in the stronger the numbers the stronger that economy the weaker the numbers the weaker that economy don't get fooled don't over it right so this is how we actually do a top-down analysis focusing on all these aspects that we've covered in terms of we've looked at the fundamentals we've identified our direction we've identified if whether also the the, the big boys or the, the smart money is also in the same direction that being the commitment of traders report we've also then done our 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 interest rate uh, analysis to see if whether we'll be getting a positive interest payment for holding this trade because we understand it's a fundamental it's a fundamental based trade right and it's based on the true direction so it means that it's not something that will change overnight or that's going to change tomorrow it's going to take time so if we're holding will we be getting paid for holding because we need to get paid for holding we don't we don't just want to hold the trade and have the swap start eating into our profits right so this is how you double up your profits this is how you maximize your profits by understanding the direction based on fundamentals and once you know you are certain of the direction based on fundamentals then you go on to the technical side of things then you can start applying the technical side of things looking for pullbacks on the weekly or the or, 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 um, or the daily time frame then you look for your entries then of course you also use your forex sentiment so we so as you can see on australia against the new zealand dollar 95 percent are buying which means that they are wrong and then price should obviously continue falling right it's not me saying that they are wrong it's statistics that show that majority of retail traders are generally are generally wrong so if majority is buying that means that the price should continue falling or it means that the price should continue going in my direction based on what i got from the fundamentals based on what i got from the numbers based on what i got from based on what i got from the actual commitment of traders report that the big players in the game are buying australia are buying new zealand and they are selling the australian dollar right so this really tie everything together that I've, I've explained to you guys we use fundamentals for the direction we use technicals for the entry and everything else right but we get our confidence of the direction our confidence to hold the trade we get all of that from what from fundamentals right and then once we have that then we can patiently and comfortably hold our positions without panicking whenever we're getting pullbacks because the fundamental picture has not changed right so that is what we have there and that is how you do a top-down analysis using fundamentals guys so i hope you like that video and i hope you got a lot of value from this video and of course as always don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and then don't forget to also share the video with people who, in, who might benefit from it 
if you are already ahead and you see that there is someone who might benefit from this content and share it with them it won't it won't be a, it, it shouldn't be an issue for you uh, and of course don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified when i upload another video until next time guys cheers